Hello. Once again, all good it is to be with you. This is a this is a special day for me because on this September 6th, 41 years ago, I was ordained, and it's a day of joy and happiness after these 41 years to be with the Lord in this ministry. Joy and happiness. That's in a sense the theme of this uh, gospel on this 24th Sunday at Ordinary Time. This gospel reading, the, um, if we read the entire thing, is drawn from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 32. But I'd like to go with all the readings, first of all from Exodus. Exodus, this particular reading, it, brings out the fact that there are sinners. Here God is quoted as saying, they, the Israelite people, have turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, unwilling to bend to God's will. In other words, that sin, and they are sinners. And again, the Lord said, I see how stiff-necked this people is. They don't turn to God, but they keep going their own way. That is sin. Not turning to God, but going our own way. In the New Testament reading, the epistle reading, specifically here um, from uh, John's, rather, I'm sorry, from Paul's first letter uh, to Timothy, from the section here from chapter 1, uh, Paul says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these I, speaking of himself, Paul, am the foremost. For, this re for that reason I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, the foremost of sinners. Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. Paul was once a sinner, and now he has turned away from his sin. And he's a follower of Christ. In the Gospel reading, Jesus responds to the fact that he's being criticized for attracting sinners, tax collectors and sinners. Being he's being criticized by the um, religious elite of the time, the Pharisees and the scribes, that he welcomes sinners and eats with them. To this he responds with parables, three of them, the first two short ones. What man among you would not leave the 99 and go after the one lost sheep? What one of you would not go once, you, once the coin is lost? and search after the, that particular coin. And when the, the sheep, the lost sheep has been found, when the lost coin has been found, everyone rejoices. Not in the fact that we still have the 99, not in the fact that we still have the other coins that were not lost, but that the one that was lost has been found. In other words, that the sinner has returned to the fold. And then he gives us that wonderful story of the prodigal son, of the sinner who abandons, the son who abandons his father, goes and loses the fortune, but then returns to his father. And the father is in great joy that he has come back. What happiness the father has and having his own son come back to him. 
But the son who was still there doesn't understand this joy, this happiness, this celebration. What he's teaching the Pharisees, who are like the elder son, he's telling them, join in the thinking in the ways of God who has come to save sinners. Rejoice, celebrate in the fact that the sinners have returned to the Lord, that they are now one with the Lord. The whole purpose of God giving his life, giving us life, is that we might join in his life, his life of love, and that that life not only belongs to us, that life of love, that holiness not only belongs to us, but belongs to everyone that God has created. We rejoice when we and everyone else around us join together with the Lord in the life of love. Thank you very much. May you likewise celebrate and have that joy and being a part of God's life of love and attracting others to follow the Lord in his life of love and holiness.